This meeting is being recorded. Thank you for joining us for Thank the WJCC 2022 Retirement Seminar. We're happy to have so many of our employees join us today. Um, and thank you for those of you who will be watching the video later. As we prepare to start the presentation, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that we can get our agenda for today going. Here we are. Can everybody see my screen okay? John, can I just get a yes from you if we can see the screen okay? And my unmute button works. Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. All right, so today, um, our agenda for today, uh, we're gonna have some WJCC information. This information, if you have attended these presentations before, it's not changed very much, um, if at all. And then we will have our retirement presentation, Are You Ready? by Ms. Macklin, who is joining us from the Virginia Retirement System. We will follow that with um, VRS online process. So now you can apply for retirement online. However, we will also still have the paper pencil option. So I will go over that as well. So that's sort of our agenda for today. Um, we will have the opportunity to stop and answer questions. So please put your questions in the chat. Um, John Andre will be monitoring the chat for us um, so that you can um, ask your questions. And then of course, at the end, um, something that we didn't hit just right, if you want to unmute yourself at that point and ask your questions, we can do that as well. So let's get started. When you make your decision to retire, please be sure to notify your supervisor or principal in writing. You can CC that, whether it's an email or a letter to Human Resources, so that we can be sure that that information is shared um, on, on our personnel actions at the board meeting for board approval. So yes, you please need to put that in writing to your principal. Oftentimes people will tell me, um, well, I share it with my principal, I talk to my principal, and that's great. You should communicate that way, but also be sure that you put it in writing to your principal. Specific information to WJCC. Um, this is always a question as well. Retiree sick leave payout. So for our retirees, school board policy does allow for you to be paid out for any remaining sick leave that you have upon retirement. The rate is at 25% of your daily rate times the number of days you have with a maximum of $5,000. So I get the question oftentimes, what is my daily rate? How do I know my daily rate? Your daily rate is your annual salary, your annual contracted salary, divided by the number of days you are contracted to work. So for example, if your salary is annual salary is $50,000 and you're contracted to work 203 days, you would divide the 50,000 to 203 days, your daily rate would be about 246,000, excuse me, $246.31. Okay, so that would be your daily rate, 25% of that. And then you would take that and multiply it times the number of days. Please be um, aware that a payroll will calculate that for you. That's not something you have to worry about. Payroll calculates that. So if you retire effective July 1, you would get your July your uh, sick leave payout in July. They try to capture everything that would have happened in June. So your sick leave payout does occur the month um, of your retirement. If you retire January 1, you would get that payout in January um, as part. All right, annual leave. If you are a 12 month employee and you have annual leave, you will be paid out at the full daily rate of up to 35 days. So your 35 days, anything beyond that is forfeited. And the policy is stated is at the bottom of the screen there. So if you are a 12 month employees, employee and you have annual leave uh, remaining at retirement, you will be paid out up to 35 days. Just like sick leave, it will be paid out that month of your retirement. So if it's a Jan July 1 retirement date, um, then you will be paid out for your annual leave in July. Uh, someone has their, if you could please be sure your mic is muted. Thank you. Flexible spending. Some of our employees have flexible spending. And if you still have a flexible spending account when you retire, the medical or healthcare account, you can um, turn in any receipts to flexible benefit administrators. They are 
the third party administrator that handles FSAs for WJCC. Um, any receipts dated prior to your date of termination, you can turn those in or you, you, if you've used your card, you can use it up to your date of termination up to the full amount of your annual election. So if your annual election is $1,200, you're retiring effective July 1, um, you can use the full $1,200. Um, you, all, you will receive a July and August check. If you're a 10 month employee, you will receive your July and August check as normal. Um, and then those last two uh, last amounts will be taken out in your July and August check. So just want you to, to know that you can use up to your full allotted amount in the FSA up to your termination date. Dependent care. Um, we also have a dependent care flexible account. If you happen to have one at retirement, then uh, you can be reimbursed for your expenses incurred throughout the entire plan year. And if you will be remember, our flexible spending plan year is um, October 1 to September 30th. In addition to that, there is a 90 day grace period that extends into about mid-December. So it's not an actual full 90 days, although that's what it's referred to in the employee guide. So if you have a dependent care account, um, any expenses incurred throughout the entire plan year that you have receipts for, you can submit those um, if you have that dependent care account. If you have a 403B or 457 through Empower, and it's now Empower, used to be Mass Mutual, you have some options. You can leave those funds there at retirement. You can roll them over into your IRA or another 403B account somewhere else. Maybe that you have one with Edward Jones or you have it with um, some other company and you want to roll over those funds and have them all in one pot. You can certainly do that. Um, or you can withdraw those funds. I have had retirees who have a monthly um, withdrawal that they receive from their 403B or 457, or they may take lump sum amounts throughout their retirement until it's depleted. The phone number is listed there at 1-800-528-9009. That has not changed from when it was Mass Mutual. Um, and Power has just taken on that number. So you can still call. In fact, I called the other day just to be sure um, that you can still call that number and talk to their customer care department. They will provide you with the appropriate forms for the type of withdrawal that you want to do, whether it's a rollover or a, or a withdrawal. Okay, the medical, your health insurance. This is something oftentimes our employees want to know the most. What happens to my health insurance? Well, as a full-time employee, if you retire from WJCC schools and start to draw your retirement from VRS, you may stay on the WJCC coverage until you are Medicare eligible if you meet the following criteria. And before I go there, what is Medicare eligible? It means you are at 65, and you are eligible to start to take Part B as a retiree. If you are still working and active, you can stay on our coverage. But once you are a retiree, you can stay on our coverage until you are Medicare, el Medicare eligible. And it can continue if you have been with WJCC for a minimum of five years. That's the first criteria. Second criteria, you must be covered at the time of retirement and you must have been covered for at least 24 months leading up to retirement. So if you're on WJCC coverage, you've been with WJCC for at least five years, you've had coverage with WJCC for at least 24 months leading up to your retirement, and you decide you want to stay on that coverage, you're less than 65, you can do so. However, you do so um, at the full cost of the coverage. Um, a part of the email that I sent to you was the retiree cost, the monthly cost. As you can see on that, um, it's the full total premium. The cost for the new plan year will be available during open enrollment. Um, we will make those available for those who are interested in staying on our coverage. You will have to complete an enrollment form, uh, the TLC enrollment form, or online. We may be doing an open enrollment with TLC online next year. So I will go over that form shortly, but I just want you to be aware that you can stay on the coverage if you meet the criteria at the full cost of the coverage and you are billed directly by Anthem. 
If you do choose to stay on the coverage, you cannot decrease your coverage. Excuse me, you cannot increase your coverage. You may decrease. For example, we offer three coverages, Key Advantage 250, Key Advantage 500, and the high deductible plan. If you have 250, you could drop down to the 500 plan or the high deductible plan. However, if you have Key Advantage 500 and you're retiring, you cannot move up to the 250 plan and that's per policy. Um, you cannot add any additional dependents that are not already on your plan. And if you drop our plan in retirement, you can't come back on it later. Okay, just wanna make sure we have clear on all that. If you do stay on WJCC coverage because you are less than um, 65 and you have met the criteria, then WJCC offers uh, a $750 annually toward the cost of your coverage. That averages out to about $62.50 a month. Of course, it's prorated depending on when your um, retirement date is. So if you start July 1, um, then you will start to receive it and you stay on the coverage through September 30th because you're less than 65 and you can do that. Then you'll cover, you will get your first 6250, I believe in September, okay? Um, in order to be eligible for the 750 or the 6250 per month, you must have been with the division for 12 continuous years, again, per policy, to be eligible for the 750. Now, I mentioned earlier that I would review completing the form, but I also stated that for open enrollment this year, we may be doing it online. The local choice, TLC, um, are moving, migrating towards an online process. So we may be doing that. They may still accept paper forms and they may not, but I wanted to go over the form just in case so you are aware. aware. I suspect that the online process, I have not seen it yet, will mirror the form. So hopefully we won't have to do anything different, but this is what you will have to do. So this is, you start with part one. Of course, you would complete the form. Many of you have probably seen this before, everybody who has our coverage, and even if you haven't, you had to waive coverage. So you've seen this form before. You're gonna start at the beginning, put in your name, social security number, sign it, and date it the date that you signed the form. Part two, you're gonna do part two B, um, initial enrollment as a retiree, because you're, you're going into retiree coverage now, from active to retiree. Last day of coverage, if you are staying on our coverage, you're likely under 65, or you are under 65, and your coverage will go through September 30th as the active employee, and then retiree coverage becomes effective October 1. So let me repeat that. If you are staying on WJCC coverage, and you are going to, uh, or if you're not, but if you have WJCC coverage and you're staying on it, your coverage will go through as an active employee through September 30th, retiree coverage will pick up October 1. If you have WJCC coverage and you are less than 65, but you're not gonna stay on WJCC coverage, your coverage will still go through September 30th. And then of course, if you have other coverage with your spouse or whomever, it will pick up, you need to have it pick up 10-1. Okay, I wanna make sure I clarify that as well. Part three of the form, um, fill in your demographic information where you might say, well, they have that because I've had coverage before and uh, you're absolutely right, they do, but they still require that you fill out the form, that information on the form again. And then finally, select your coverage. Remember I just said, if you're staying on the coverage, you can keep the coverage that you currently have or you can drop down, um, but you cannot move up. And then of course you want to um, check the box that mimics your coverage and list who's gonna be covered. You and your spouse, if you and your spouse were covered before and that's who you want to continue covered. You, your spouse and dependent, if you're, you, your spouse and dependent were covered before and you wanna continue that. Or if it's just you as the retiree, you want to um, make sure that you list who's gonna be covered. The final thing on here, or not the final, one more thing. At the bottom, part C and part five, you do not have to complete, okay, as a retiree. But the final thing is, please, at the top, if we're at little, those little red boxes, check that you are a retiree. That's a signal for me to make sure that I notify TLC that this is a retiree and that they are to be direct billed. 
So remember I told you, you would pay Anthem directly if you stay on the coverage, you're billed by Anthem, you pay Anthem directly, okay? I'm gonna take a second and stop right there. John, do we have any questions in the chat? Uh, there are a couple of questions. Yeah, I'm getting feedback, so if I get kind of flaky, let me know. Okay. Um, the first question, are sick leave is in munis as hours? Do we divide the number of hours by the length of our day to get the, day, the number of days they have? Yes. Is it? Yes, so if you have, if you work seven hours a day, and let's say you have 21 hours, then seven goes into 21, you have three days, so yes. Uh, the next question, is it better to have my stop work date on the first day of the month or the last day of the month? Uh, that depends. Um, probably the last day of the month because VRS retirement is always as of the first of the month. And that may be different for different people. And that may be an individual conversation I may have to have with someone. But for example, someone who's working to the end of the school year, your last day of work then would be, let's just, I don't know what it is, but I'm just gonna use this as an example. So it says June 18th. Then you can say in your letter to your, to your principal, I plan to retire effective the end of the school year and you're covered. If you are retiring mid-year, uh, let's say that you want to have your retirement date be January 1, then your last day that you work would probably be the last day, if you're a 10-month employee, leading up to the winter break, then you would put that in your letter. However, for VRS purposes, your retirement date is always the first of the month. Okay. A question on flex spending. What happens to the flexible spending funds if I don't use it all and some of it is the money that I have paid in? So uh, the flex spending rules are the same for um, if you retire mid-year or leave mid-year. Uh, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yep. So I encourage you to, if at all possible, use your funds. Let me just add in that is not our policy. That's IRS regulations that have to be followed in that case. Correct. Thank you, John. Another question on, on staying on the insurance plan. If we pay Anthem directly, how do we receive the credit? So the from WJCC, if I know that you're staying on the coverage because I've worked with you and I have the form or we've done it online and then I notify finance and the checks come from accounts payable and they're mailed directly to you. Once you are Medicare eligible and you're no longer on the coverage, I again notify finance and say, Lorianne Smith is now 65 and is coming off of our coverage. Her last check should be X month and that check stops. The health insurance credit from the from VRS that Ms. Macklin will talk about shortly, however, is a lifetime credit. Another question, does your spouse have to be on your Anthem policy a set amount, a set time in order to buy coverage through WJCC? That's not listed in the policy that the spouse has to be on there for a set amount of time. It does say that, that you, the employee, has to have, have to have had coverage for at least 24 months leading up to. Um, but if your spouse is on there at the time that you retire, your spouse can remain on your coverage moving forward as a retiree. How much tax is taken out of the total monthly amount, retirement amount? Taxes out of retirement amount. I think we're gonna talk about that a little later, but I will address that now as far as taxes. Um, I can't tell you what your taxes will be because I don't know how many exemptions someone is gonna claim. I don't know what tax bracket you're in. However, when we look at um, the online process for retirement in, in a little bit, you will see that at the top of one of the screens, they do have an estimated tax amount for um, the particular example that's provided. However, I can't tell you what your taxes will look like um, for your retirement benefit. 
if I am over 65, can I stay on medical coverage with WJCC for Part B? I assume we, with Medicare. Yeah, so we don't offer a Medicare supplement. Anthem does offer an Advantage 65. However, WJCC does not offer it. And so we do not offer a supplement for um, to go along with Medicare Part B. Let, let me just add, if you are not yet retired and you're still working for WJCC and you're over 65, then you don't have to take the Part B be, uh, because you'll already have creditable coverage with WJCC, if that's what you're saying. If, if, you're, if you're retiring, you can't stay on, but if you are still active over 65, uh, you can delay Part B until you retire. That's absolutely correct. And if you are an active employee and you're still on WJCC coverage and you have waived Part B, when you do retire and you're getting ready to activate Part B, there is a form that um, Medicare requires to be completed by the employer. I have filled out that form for lots of people and I'm happy to do that so that you avoid any penalty for not taking the uh, Medicare Part B when you first turn 65. That's a simple form. I fill it out um, several uh, each year for retiring employees, so that's not a problem. I believe you addressed it briefly, but is there a medical credit we get through VRS? Health insurance credit, yes. We're gonna talk about that a little later. Any recommendations for Part B coverage? I'm not a Medicare Part B expert and I hesitate to give anybody any guidance in that area because I don't want to give you misguided um, information. I always recommend that um, persons getting ready to start the Medicare Part B process, contact Social Security Administration or go online to medicare.gov. You're gonna get a lot better accurate information than I could possibly give because that's not my wheelhouse and I try to stay in my lane. <laughs> mm. And I believe that's the questions for now. Okay, great, thank you. So we're gonna move on. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Macklin. Uh, retirement, are you ready? And if you would just give me a second to stop sharing my screen and pull up her presentation, we will do that. Not where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Can you see that? Can does everybody see? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Thank you, John. All right, Miss Macklin, I'm ready when you are. Okay. Excellent. Good afternoon, um, WJ. CC, it's always a pleasure to um, be part of your retirement seminar. Retirement, are you ready? Most of you all are probably five years or less away from retirement and you need to know what to expect. So today I'm just going to walk through some of your retirement options and some of the benefits that are, that are available to you as um, VRS members. Next slide. Oh, sorry. Here we are. What does it mean? Okay. What does it mean to be a member of VRS? To make informed retirement decisions, you need to know what plan you're in and when you're eligible for retirement. So first, we're going to start by determining the plan you're in. Next slide. You are a plan one member if your membership date is July is before July 1st, 2010 and you were vested as of January the 1st, 2013. You are plan two member if your membership date is before July 1st, 2010, and you were not vested as of January the 1st, 2013. Hybrid members. A hybrid member is anyone that was hired after January the 1st, 2014. What does it mean to be vested? Vested means you must have five years of service credit to be eligible to retire when you meet the age service requirements for your plan. 
Next, I just kind of want to go over the difference be between the three plans. Plan one, plan two are strictly defined benefit plans, which most people think of as a pension plan. This plan pays a lifetime monthly benefit and it's based on a formula. Rather than the amount of money you put in the system, this means that the contributions paid by you and your employer are invested to help pay for your future benefits. So with the defined benefit plan, BRS manages the investments and the risk. Now for the hybrid plan, it's a combination of both a defined benefit plan, meaning hybrid members would still receive a pension benefit, plus they have a defined contribution plan. So the defined contribution plans are traditional, similar to traditional 401ks. So you and your employer put money into the plan and the benefit is then paid based on their contributions. So again, your VRS actual benefit that you will receive is not based on the money or the contributions that we will have when we are set to retire. It's based on the formula. And as you can see here, the formula is based on your years of service, your average final compensation, either a 36 average higher compens compensation or a um, 60 months highest credible compensation. It just depends on what plan you're in um, as to how the benefit is calculated. So that's very important just to understand um, how the benefit is calculated, years of service, a multiplier, and your average final compensation. Next slide. Okay, I hope that by now you all have set up your My VRS member um, tool online. This is a, a great resource. Um, everything relating to your VRS account is now housed into this My VRS portal. I strongly suggest that you take the time, set up your account, username, passwords. Um, if you need assistance with logging into the account, you can definitely contact our call center to assist you. It is a lot, a lot of information. Your account balance, this is where you will use your um, estimator to create those estimates that I will talk about the payout options in a second. You can see your life insurance. You can see your contributions. You can now manage your beneficiaries. I'm gonna talk about that later. Um, you can now apply on, online here for retirement. Um, we have made a lot of great enhancements um, to this MyVRS portal um, to make it easier for our members to use. So it's a lot of great information um, that you should be using in this tool um, as you're planning for retirement. So we're going to talk more about how great this tool is uh, later on toward the end of the presentation. Next slide. Also, Built into the MyVRS portal, we have now a financial wellness page. Um, you can view videos, calculators, um, budgeting tools, and there is a large list of just many courses. If you want to know more about um, budgeting, paying off credit, um, more information regarding just like uh, post-retirement benefits, long-term care, senior living, health insurance, taxes. So please take the time to you know, review the financial wellness page. It has a lot of great information. Next slide. Kelsey, next we're gonna talk about, um, as I mentioned before, um, for all of us, plan one, plan two hybrid members, retirement is based on uh, age and your years of service. Um, so this for plan one members, this is your retirement eligibility um, calendar here, I like to call it. Um, it shows your reduced benefit, I'm sorry, your reduced age, year of service would be age 55 with at least five years of service or age 50 with at least 10 years of service. If you decide to retire, retire with a reduced benefit, there is a um, reduction factor that's also applied to your benefit. Uh, most of our members of Plan 1, they want to wait until they, you know, get to that magical age of age 65 or having at least 30 years of service. 
um, then that way your monthly benefit from BRS will not be a redu reduced benefit. So this is unreduced plan one members age 65 with at least five years of service or age 50 with at least 30 years of service. You know, by all means, you can definitely work longer than age 65 and have more than 30 years, but that's your decision. But you please know that once you re just reach the criteria for unreduced, you can retire um, from your employer if you choose to. Next slide. Okay, for plan two members and hybrid members, this is your reduction in unreduced um, chart. You must be at least age 60 with five years of service to qualify for a reduced benefit. For an unreduced benefit, um, there's something called the rule of 90, meaning your age service credit must equal 90. Or if you have met your full social security age um, and have at least five years of service. So this is the criteria for your age, year of service, if you are plan two member or if you are a hybrid member. Next slide. So as we get closer to retirement, um, one of the, the main pieces um, to planning your retirement is understanding the retirement payout options that VRS offers. Um, very important. I'm going to briefly go through these options. More detail about each of these options are on our website um, under uh, retirement plans, benefit uh, payout options. I strongly suggest that each of you take the time, read them all, use that benefit calculator that's in my VRS to calculate um, each payout options just to see um, what benefit you payout option you wish to decide on. That's your decision. You can only choose one. So next, I'm just going to talk about briefly about the payout options. Next slide. Okay, the first is the basic benefit. It's the highest consistent monthly benefit that you can choose. There is no reduction um, to the benefit over time. Um, if you choose the basic benefit, you cannot change your selection after you retire, meaning this is the ir, um, irrevocable uh, option. This benefit is paid only to you, which means it does not provide a monthly benefit to, say, your spouse. Upon your passing, your pension benefit would end if you elect the basic benefit. Okay, next slide. The next option is survivor option. Now with the survivor option, you can receive a monthly retirement benefit during your lifetime and provide a benefit for someone else after your death. Because this benefit is paid beyond your lifetime, your monthly amount is less than the basic benefit. The amount your benefit is reduced will depend on the percentage of the benefit you leave to your survivor and the difference between your age and the age of your survivor. So to determine the percentage, you want to consider your needs in retirement. So when you're on my VRS and you're selecting, say, service retirement, I want to retire July 1st, 2022, it's going to then ask you for which option you can then choose survivor option. It will ask you for their survivor's um, um, relationship, such as spouse or other, their date of birth, and you must choose a percentage. This calculator will show you what your monthly benefit will be and also what your survivor benefit will be. Now of the payout options, this is the only option that can be changed at any time after you retire, all right? So remember, survivor option is the only option that can be changed after you retire, okay? Next slide. Next, the partial lump sum payment option, also known as PLOP. Now with the PLOP, you can either add basic with the PLOP, survivor with the PLOP. To be, con to be eligible for the PLOP, um, it is first you receive a monthly benefit and a lump sum amount at retirement. The plot payment is paid two weeks after you receive your first monthly benefit. 
Now, we are not all eligible for PLOP. Oh, I wish I was now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, to be eligible for PLOP, you must work at least one year beyond, beyond your unreduced retirement age. All right, so you wanna think about plan one members, plan two members, hybrid members. You wanna re review that unreduced um, plan benefit age year service to see you have to meet that criteria first, then anything after you meet that time frame, you're actually working toward a plop if you decide to go forth with a plop. Again, um, you can work up to one, two, or three years beyond your unreduced retirement age to get this plop. Keep in mind though, if you're taking the plop, um, it does reduce your monthly benefit. Um, that plot payment is a great payout. You may want to use that lump sum. It is payable one time. Um, you may want to have that a plot pay directly to you, meaning uh, checking account savings. It is taxed 24% in lieu of all of those taxes. You can also say, hey, VRS, can you please roll that plop into my 403B account? That way there are no tax incurred at retirement. Uh, but later on, once you decide to dis, you know, um, disperse those uh, contributions, um, or you can say, hey, you know what? After you run those estimates on my VRS, you have 35 years of service. You run the estimate. It shows you your three-year plop. Um, but you may, may not need the plot because you have other investments in your full 3 b or an IRA. So just to say, just because you're eligible, you don't have to take the plot. It's just one of the payout options, all right? We'll also say, if you are considering the PLOP, you please meet with a tax advisor, financial advisor, um, just to see how it may affect your benefit. Of course, it's gonna affect your benefit. Or if you're having this PLOP paid directly to you, then of course, there's tax implications um, and taxes, you know, when you're uh, receiving that tax statement the following year from VRS. So definitely weigh all your options, think about these payout options, and just see what's the best one for you and your family. Next slide. Okay, this is just a, a quick uh, little slide showing what I've already stated. Um, you can take either a one-year, a two-year, or a three-year plot. Next slide. Next, we're gonna talk about the advanced pension option. The advanced pension option is, um, provides a more balanced income during your retirement years and is coordinated with social security. Now with this option, you receive a higher, a higher VRS benefit and to the age you tell us to reduce your benefit. You, the age you select can be between 62 and when you become eligible for full social security benefits. Keep in mind, if you are thinking about taking this advanced pension option, um, it does not affect your um, social security benefit. It is a leveling option, meaning it's gonna, you're gonna receive a higher monthly benefit um, from VRS while you're waiting to receive that social security benefit. All right, so um, use your estimator, plug in this advanced pension option. Um, the estimator will also want you to um, go straight to Social Security. You have to pull, log into your Social Security um, profile. It's going to ask you to pull some numbers um, just so that you can see the difference between um, this uh, payout option if you know want to receive a higher benefit prior to um, Social Security. Next slide. Okay, this again, you're going to receive a temporary increase in your monthly benefit um, between the age of 62 um, or 66, 67. Again, if you decide to take this payout option, um, it is again irrevocable. Um, you cannot select a survivor option. You cannot take a plot. We like to call this little bad boy the standalone option, all right? So you wanna make sure you use that estimate and understand how your benefit is gonna increase and decrease. 
Um, I will have like an example kind of showing you um, how this uh, survivor option, I'm sorry, how the advanced, advanced pension option work as an, an, as an example. Next slide. Okay, this is just some more information as to some of the requirements that VRS will need if you're considering taking this option. Next slide. Okay, again, I already stated it's a standalone option. Um, if you are someone that is retiring with a reduced uh, benefit, um, then you may not be eligible for this option. One great thing about the my VRS estimator, if you're not eligible for one of these uh, payout options, um, that calculator will advise you, um, you know, that you're you're not eligible for advanced pension or for PLOP. Next slide. Okay, now these are just some examples that I've included in the presentation. The first one is um, just showing uh, this gentleman, we're gonna call him Steve. He has 57 years of service. Um, I'm sorry, he's 57 years of age, 24 years of service um, with a average final compensation of uh, $56,000. Um, next slide. He's thinking about taking the PLOP um, in the advanced pension option. Here you see the example. If he decides to take the PLOP, he has worked an additional years up to having 31 years to be eligible for the PLOP. You can see here, if he takes the basic benefit, his benefit would be over uh, $1,200. This is before taxes. Um, if he takes the advanced pension option though, um, before age 62, he's gonna receive a higher benefit of over about 1,900 from VRS, that's before taxes. Um, you know, he may have a car note he wanna pay off or maybe some more on his mortgage he wanna pay off and he's a widow and he wants to receive that advanced pension option. But look at what happens um, to his benefit when he reaches 62, he selected 62 um, for his reduction age. Um, at 62, his VRS benefit is gonna take a big dip down to $777.61. But um, he's not too upset, he's paid off that mortgage and um, he's gonna start collecting social security at 62. So that's gonna equal back up to 1900. However though, if he hadn't decided to take the advanced pension option, just the basic, his social security benefit um, I'm sorry, his, his retirement benefit would have not reduced, okay? So the only time your monthly benefits reduce is when you take the advanced pension option because it works along with social security, okay? Next slide. Okay, this is, um, Steve is thinking about um, maybe working, again, like I stated, 31 years to qualify for PLOT. Okay, he's not really interested in taking the advanced pension. He just want that lump sum um, of that 29,511 to roll over into his 403B. So this is just an example showing what his plot benefit would be and how his monthly benefit would be reduced if he decide to work up until um, having 31 years of service. Okay, so again, these are just some examples. I wanted to throw it in there um, so that you can have just see an, an example of how these options differ. Again, you have to make the decision. VRS, know your employer can tell you which option to select. You want to make sure you use our resources and understand each option and use the estimator as you plan for retirement. Next slide. Okay, I already stated this, request an estimate. You don't really have to request an estimate from VRS, not unless when you run your estimate in the MyVRS, if there's something that's kind of quirky, meaning you know it's overstating your average final compensation, or if you know you're eligible for PLOP and the estimator is showing that you're not, that's when you want to reach out to VRS, and then we can you know request you an, a manual estimate. So definitely um, take the time, set up your MyVRS account, and run these estimates. Um, so that you can make a sound decision in retirement. Next slide. Health insurance, Ms. Smith has already discussed your health insurance option. Health insurance is a big expense in retirement. So definitely, you know, speak with Mrs. Smith. If you're a Medicare eligible member, um, at 65 or older, 
you know, go ahead and go on MedicareWeb.gov uh, uh, to see what your options are. There are a lot of Medicare supplement plans and there are a lot of uh, Med Medicare Advantage plans. So don't wait until it's time to retire. Go ahead and research that, you know, now if you're going to be retiring within the next few months. Next slide. Health insurance credit is a great, great benefit. It is a, a non-taxable reimbursement to help with the cost of your health insurance premiums. Um, but you have to be eligible, meaning your employer must offer the health insurance credit um, to be eligible. The credit is added automatically to your monthly benefit, to your net check, meaning um, after VRS deducts those taxes, then the credit is added back to your check. Um, if you're completing the online retirement process, um, there is a section that will ask you to complete your uh, health insurance information, um, your premium, your carrier. If you have that information, you know, as you're submitting the online retirement. If you are not sure, you know, um, after you retire, if you're going to go under your husband's plan or if you're going to go outside your employer's plan, don't feel like you, you can't complete your, your paperwork without the credit form need to be completed. It does not. If you have your health insurance information as you're planning for retirement, great, submit it. Complete the form. If you have it, um, say a month or two after you retire, not a problem. There is a request for health insurance credit form online where you can still be eligible for this. Again, you must have 15 years of service to be eligible. Your employer must participate. This credit can go toward your health insurance premium, your Part B premium, your Medicare supplement, any vision dental prescription plan. All right, so it's a great benefit. The credit is um, uh, your years of service uh, times $4, if I'm not mistaken. $4 times your years of service is what that credit is. And it's a great benefit. Um, if you're eligible for the credit, then it will reflect um, in your annual statement. Okay, that annual statement is on your MyVRS page um, under annual statements, select 2021, and you will see all of your benefits in that little profile. Okay, next slide. Basic life insurance, okay? As we get close to retirement, you should also think about your life insurance needs you will need in retirement. Um, if you participate, and I believe your school does, in the VRS basic group life insurance, um, there is a natural death, an accelerated death benefit. We have an accidental death benefit right now. Um, when you retire, you will continue with the natural death and the accelerated death benefit, but the accidental death benefit will discontinue in retirement, okay? Um, again, another reason why you should log into MyVRS, you can see your life insurance value. You can see your life insurance. If you have optional life insurance, you can view that, all right? Um, another great benefit, um, I'm sorry, not benefit. Yeah, it is a benefit. You can manage your benefits, beneficiaries online now. Uh, that's wonderful. You don't have to have a form no more. You can do it right online. My VRS, take your time, enter your information into the portal. Now let's talk about how your life insurance reduces after retirement. Um, your life insurance will begin to reduce after you've been retired for one full calendar year. All right, so for example, if I'm retiring July 1st, 2022, July 1st, 2023 is a full calendar year from January to December. January the 1st, 2024, my life insurance will begin to reduce by 25%. It will continue to reduce every January the 1st by 25% until it reaches the original value once it reaches the original value, it will stay at that level for the rest of your life. All right. So for a quick example, when you look into your uh, MyVRS portal online, click on life insurance, you're going to see your value. 
That's a lot of money. It's a great benefit. Just divide that amount you see, divide it by four. That will show you what your life insurance value will be divided by four that you will have for the rest of your life. Okay, um, great benefit. Um, it is no cost to you. Most important, keep your beneficiary forms up to date. Not only in retirement, you have this benefit right now as employees of um, WJ, um, I'm sorry, of your school system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so definitely, you know, you have life insurance. Um, you have a member contribution account. So if anything happened to you, you pass before you can retire. VRS, your school division, we don't keep your funds. We don't keep your life insurance. We don't keep your contributions. Those benefits have to be paid out. So please take the time to go online. If you know you haven't updated your benefits, a beneficiary form since you've been hired there, please do that. Very, very important. All right, next slide. Okay, some of you all may have optional life insurance. If you do, you will see that um, when you click on life insurance, it will show your optional life insurance value. Now, if you are planning to continue with optional life after you retire, you must contact Security and Life Insurance. Their phone number is there when you log in and you will be able to talk to a representative. They will tell you what your premium will be. VRS cannot deduct that premium from your pension. You will need to set up how you want to pay for this premium after you retire, okay? Optional life insurance, again, you have to make a decision whether to keep paying it or to cancel it after you retire. Um, depending on how long you have had the coverage, the premium will either be a non-group rate or you can continue as a... Um, a group rate. So definitely something to think about with optional life insurance. It also reduces, it reduces every five years by 25%. All right. So this is a little different than the basic. Optional life insurance reduces every five years. Milestone birthdays, 65, 70, 75. At age 80, if you decide that you've kept this for a up until age 80, this benefit goes to zero. So that's something to think about, okay? Um, you're paying this optional life insurance now. If you decide to continue this benefit in retirement, please know that at age 80, it goes to zero. So you may wanna evaluate your life insurance needs right now with your family to see if you have enough coverage uh, at your passing. Okay, next slide. Okay, we have a lot of resources. On, um, on our website. This is just some phone numbers here. Um, our customer contact center, we are open from 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Any of those reps will gladly assist you. Um, right now, our walk-in counseling center, which is the, um, in Richmond, we are not open at, at this time. Um, we hopefully will be opening, um, hopefully in the spring, all right? But right now, you can reach out to us by phone, email, um, a lot of great information that I've gone over today is on our website. Our website is full of a lot of information. We have made it easier for our members to understand their benefits. We also have now, um, on the next slide, please. You can also, um, right under where it says education, view education and counseling. We have webinars. We have also, um, virtual counseling appointments. And our employees love these virtual counseling appointments. You go, you select that you're plan one, two, or hybrid. Make sure you're selecting the right plan you're in. Then you're gonna select, it will have like the different regions, depending on where you live. You select that region and you're gonna be able to see that calendar and show the dates and the times. You set your own appointments. Um, they are 30 minute slots. Um, once you made that appointment, we are then in contact with you by email to set that appointment. A lot of these appointments are done by Microsoft Teams. Um, it is a video. If you don't want to use video, not a problem. We can call you by phone. So I just want to let you know that we have a lot of resources available, virtual appointments, since we're not really back in the field now doing, you know, presentations, one-on-ones. 
you can reach us. We're here to assist you as you plan for retirement. So a lot of great resources. Next slide. Okay, this brings us to the end of retirement. Are you ready? I hope you have found this presentation helpful as you reach your goal for a rewarding retirement and as you plan for retirement in the next, say, few months or the next years. Again, uh, it was my pleasure to deliver this. And um, thank you all so much. Thank you, Ms. Macklin, for sharing all that wealth of information. Um, I'm sure a few people may be reviewing this again, uh, and I'm sure we have some questions. So I'm going to go to John and see what questions we might have. Uh, we do have a few questions, Laurieann. If you don't mind, before I forget, I missed the question before during your presentation on uh, medical coverage. The question was, if I am over 65, can I stay on medical coverage with WJCC for Part B? No, that's not the question. I'm only got one job to do and mess that up. Uh, the question is, if I'm over 65 and retire, but I can go on my husband's, I'm assuming, health plan, do I still need the form that Laurieann fills out regarding Part B? Uh, no, um, because what would happen is when you do get ready to do Part B, then you would get uh, me to fill out the form that I would need to fill out for the time that you turned when you were 65 and working with WJCC. And then the your spouse's employer would fill it out for the time that you were 65 and on their coverage. Um, so it would be two forms um, for Medicare so that they could see that you had credible coverage and you're not charged that penalty. Um. Questions for Ms. Macklin. How is the amount of the plop determined? Okay, that's a, that's a great question. The plop amount is based on your basic benefit amount. Okay, so um, when a member um, goes to the estimate to create estimate, select basic benefit and plop the estimator will show how many years of plot that member is actually eligible for. It will display the lump sum payment amount and the monthly benefit, all right? So say, for example, if the basic benefit, meaning that basic benefit amount is $1,200, the plot payment for a one-year plot, you take the $1,200, if that's your basic benefit, times 12, and that will be um, times 12, I'm sorry. Um, did I do that right? I'm sorry, let's go back. <laughs> 1,000, say if your basic benefit is $1,000 times 12, your, your plop is $12,000. Now, say if you are eligible for a two-year plop, $1,000 times 24, and your plop is $24,000. If you take um, a three-year plop, your basic benefit, $1,000 times 36, your plop is $36,000. So whatever you, the, the calculator is going to calculate the plop payment uh, a lump sum automatic, all right? So the way we arrive at that plop payment, a lot of members think it's your salary. Nothing to do with your salary, okay? The formula of how we... Um, of, of how we arrive at the basic benefit, it incorporates your salaries, okay? But the, the plot payment is derived from the basic benefit. The basic benefit times 12, 24, or 36 is how we arrive at the plot. How do we play out that plot payment? That plot comes directly from your member contribution account. So it doesn't matter what payout option you take doesn't matter at all. We all have a member contribution account. That account must be paid out first. So once that's paid out, so meaning every month, we're going to pull your monthly benefit from your member contribution account. So if your plot payment when you retire is over uh, $150,000, where do you think we're going to pull that plot from automatically from your member contribution account? OK? 
Okay, so hopefully that answered your, your question regarding the plot uh, dollar amount. And I'm gonna add there um, also so that no one is concerned, once that member contribution account is depleted, you still have a lifetime monthly benefit that's coming to you that comes from the VRS trust. So don't think that having doing the plot, depleting your member benefit, now I no longer have a retirement benefit. Yes, you do. You have a retirement benefit for the rest of your life. Okay. Another question uh, regarding the advanced pension option. So you can't do the advanced pension option until you are 62? Um, when you say advanced pension option at age 62, no, it's, if you're eligible for, um, you can, if, if you meet the criteria for the advanced pension option right now, Meaning, if you're if you're retiring with a unreduced retirement age year of service, you can you can take the advanced pension option if you choose to. Um, with Social Security, though, the Social Security age that you enter into that calculation, the earliest age for Social Security starts at age 62. So um, hopefully I answered your question regarding the A62. When you're doing the calculation for advanced pension option, the calculator will ask, at what age do you plan to start collecting Social Security? The earliest age is age 62, or up to your full Social Security age. So um, each of us are going to have probably a different um, like age boxes based on your date of birth because your social security benefit for retirement age for social security is based on our dates of birth, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like for me, if I was to do the advanced pension option, I'm going to see ages from age 62 all the way through 67, meaning 67 is when I will receive my full social security benefit. But I could take my advanced pension option at age 63 or 65 with VRS, meaning that's when I plan to start collecting Social Security. If you ever need help with using the calculator to calculate this advanced pension, it sometimes can get a little tricky. Members, you know, get a little, I don't even want you to get confused. Um, but there's an explanation of how to use the calculator to calculate the advanced pension option and what steps to go by on our website. But if you still need help, then definitely, definitely reach out to the call center reps and they can assist you with walking you through of how to do one if you need the, you know, the correct estimate for that. A couple more questions. If you choose the survivor benefit to go to your spouse, but your spouse dies and you want to switch back to another plan, do you get back the reduced payment from the time you had the survivor plan or is that money lost? Um, that's a great question. What happens again, um, taking the survivor option, your spouse predeceases you, you would then contact VRS to let us know. Forms would need to be completed. We will need copies of, say, that death certificate. And then that retiree would have an option to select another survivor or revert back to the basic. Reverting back to the basic, VRS will recalculate your benefit. And yes, your monthly benefit will be a higher benefit based on your basic benefit. Uh, and I think the question might have also been, will you recoup any of the difference previously while you had a survivor listed? Um, it's nothing really to recoup because again, it doesn't matter which option you take, it's all coming from that same pool of uh, that account that you had prior to retirement. All right, so all that we're gonna do is recalculate the basic benefit and Yes, if you have lost any cost of living increases, I didn't even talk about that piece. Yes, we're going to, in a way, not in a way, we're going to recalculate your basic benefit, any cost of livings you have um, have received at a reduced 
benefit based on that survivor option. So yes, in a, in a sense, yes, you can call it a recouping because we, we will be a higher benefit. Okay. Um, also to clarify, is the plan one benefit based on your highest 36 months of salary from any point in your career? Um, that's correct. Um, your um, a, a plan one member's average final compensation is the average 36 months of your highest credible compensation throughout your working career. So yes, we look at the three highest, uh, I'm sorry, consecutive, consecutive three years of highest salaries. For most members, that's going to be our last three working years before we retire. Um, most of us. But there are some members that may have had a higher salary six years ago. So when you use your estimator online and when you select the estimate, the date, the payout option, you click review estimate, there is a little line there that shows you what average final compensation um, um, uh, salaries that were used to calculate your benefits. So Definitely, it is all listed showing you the months of salaries here as used to calculate to calculate your average final compensation. And I believe that's all the questions we have right now. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Macklin. Thank you, John. Thank you all for participating. We still have more to go. So stay tuned. There's more. <laughs> um, at this point, I am going to share my screen again. And we're going to talk about online retirement. So can you all hear me? Someone said they I thought someone said they couldn't hear me. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So VRS has the option now to apply for retirement online. Hey, Laurieanne. Yes. Before we go into that, we've got one more question. Uh, can you later choose a beneficiary or must you choose at retirement? You can change your beneficiaries at any time. As Ms. Macklin mentioned, you can do that online through my VRS now um, update. And I will believe Ms. Macklin, if I read something correctly, your beneficiaries that you already have on file that you did paper and pencil for, you may not see those in my VRS. VRS has them on file, but you may not see them. But you can go into the my VRS portal and enter the information, and that will be the most recent, and that will supersede any paper or pencil that was on file. Am I correct about that? That's exactly right, Ms. Smith. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So you don't have to do it. Um, at retirement, but if you do do it at retirement, I always counsel my employees that you may be a good time to go ahead and update your beneficiaries at retirement um, so that you know it's done and you know exactly who it is um, that you've listed as is fresh in your mind. Um, but you can change it later and you can change it as often as you would like. So as I was saying, um, anything else, John, before I start the next presentation? No, thank you. Thank you. So my RVRS, as I said, now you can apply online. However, as a part of the email that went out to the employees, you also have the paper forms. The, the online process does mirror the paper forms to a degree. I am going to go over both the online process and the paper forms. So get your paper forms ready because that's going to come after the um, online process. But before I start talking about the online process, Ms. Macklin mentioned registering for my VRS. If you have not done that, I do want to walk you through that process um, because it's important. If you've never gone in to um, create your username and password and to capture your account so that you can see all the great things that was spoken about earlier, I encourage you to do so. So you go to the www.varetire.org um, website. That's www.varetire.org. Click on the My VRS logo. It's right there in the upper right corner of this of the screen, and then it's going to take you to this screen. So if you are already a VRS member and you have a username and password, you're going to enter it there and then hit login. If you are a new user to My VRS and you've not logged in before, you click on New User, 
excuse me, you click on register under new, new user. Now it's gonna take you through a process. This is the next, the landing screen that you will see. At the top, it tells you what you need to have ready, the user agreement information in the box. It says my, my VRS user agreement. You wanna scroll through and read that, make sure that you agree. And once you're in agreement with what's stated there, you wanna go ahead and click agree. The next screen, you need to provide some information, your last name, your date of birth, and the last four digits of your social security number. So you're gonna include that information because now you're setting up for the first time. Remember, if you've already set up, you're just gonna use your username, password, and you're in. But if you're doing this for the first time, you're gonna enter that information and then click next. And then it's gonna take you to the first landing page that I'm gonna to go to now. So applying for retirement through the My VRS online portal. This is the landing page. Now that you've logged in, you created your username and password, it does take you through an authentication process prior to getting to this page to make sure that you are you. Um, asking you some questions that basically came out of the census, census information. I worked with someone one time and helping him to um, set up his My VRS portal, and he got a little upset, wanted to know where they got all that information from. Well, it was public information from the census um, that was they were able to gather information. So once you've done that, you've logged into My VRS. We're looking at Ms. Winona's information, and I want to apologize up front if some of these screens are a little blurry. As I went through this process of training, I captured some of the screenshots so that I could share them with you all today. Um, so I wanna make sure I apologize up front if they're a little blurry, but you should be able to see um, pretty well the information as I go through. So as Ms. Macklin mentioned, um, you can manage your beneficiaries. See, it's right there above this uh, little box here. There's a ribbon across the top of drop-down menus. Okay, Ms. Winona Smades is the person we're looking at. I think she's probably made up. If you click, don't click on this down menu here, it's a drop down it's where her profile information is. You can change her address and uh, contact information there. But we're gonna be talking about applying for retirement. I also have people asking me oftentimes, well, what plan am, am I in? I don't know. Well, if you log into the, your My VRS portal, it tells you first thing, Ms. Winona is in plan, uh, VRS plan one gives you your membership date, tells you how many years of service you have and your birth date. This is a good place also to make sure all that information is accurate. Also on the landing page, you see this continuum of age. So her retirement eligibility information here saying that at 78 and seven months, if she retires May 1, that's what she, if she had retired May 1, excuse me, 2021, that would be her monthly benefit before taxes. You will see throughout the screens, this little I right here, that's for information. If you click on that, if you get stuck somewhere, a little bubble will pop up and tell you what that is. Ms. Macklin mentioned your member account. So this is the contributions that Ms. Winona have made over the years service. And so when you retire, your monthly benefit comes from here first, your plop comes from here first. If it's depleted, then it comes from the VRS trust. So you do have a lifetime benefit. I wanna reiterate that. When this is depleted, it does not mean your retirement benefit uh, end. No, you have a lifetime benefit. So we're gonna go up here under manage my benefits, click on um, apply for retirement. And it's gonna take us to this screen. On this screen, there's a video we can watch, some information here. It gives you an option, this is a hot link to create an estimate if you have not done that before. And here's some additional information that you might wanna consider um, looking into. You can click on it. All these are hot links, hot links for you to look into if you choose to. And then you're gonna click apply now when you're ready. So if you will notice on this screen, we're applying for retirement. At the very top of the screen, you have a continuum. This continuum will track through the track you through the process so you know exactly where you are in the process. I've had one employee to do this process online and found it to be quite easy. There are videos here, video here, and there are other, there's other information here for you as well. Once you're satisfied with that information, or if you don't need it and you're ready to move on, you're gonna need to consent to doing the electronic process. 
So I always encourage um, employees to read what you're agreeing to before you agree. So read this information. If you consent, uh, check the box here. And you have the option to save and exit throughout this process. Let's say you get stopped midway through, you get a phone call, you have to leave. You can save the, the process. The continuum will pick up when you come back or you can save and continue. Which will take you to this screen. And again, this is one of those sort of fuzzy screens that um, I apologize, but I think you'll be able to get, to get the gist of it. So I'll continue them at the top. We're talking about you now, you the, the employee who's getting ready to retire. You want to verify your address. This information is accurate. Then there's a little box down here for you to click. My address is correct. If it is not accurate, you need to update it right here in my profile. You can hardly see it, but it's a hot link. And you would click on that and then go in and update your demographic information. Next, they want you to tell you about yourself. Again, this mirrors, this information mirrors the form. So if you happen to be looking at the form while I'm going through this, you will see this mirrors a little bit. Um, are you married? What is your marital status? Um, your citizenship? And then your residency, if you're a resident of Virginia. And that's important later on when we get to talk about taxes, okay? With tax withholding. If you are um, gonna be staying here in Virginia as a retiree, or maybe you're moving to Florida where it's a little bit warmer or uh, somewhere else, they wanna know if you're gonna be in Virginia. Now, um, I've enlarged this, this bottom portion a little bit more so you can see it right up there. Will you be adding service? So this part um, is purchase of service. You may have heard of purchase of prior service or purchasing service. Perhaps you um, were working part-time at WJCC or another school division or another VRS employer, and you want to now capture or purchase that service. You want to say, you want to let them know here that you want to do that. Maybe you have refunded service um, that you worked for a VRS cover position, another school division, you left the state of Virginia, you took that money out, you took that refund, you're coming up on a retirement now, or you're thinking about retirement in the future, and you wanna go ahead and, and purchase that service back, then you wanna, that all has to be taken care of prior to your retirement date. Or the final option here would be sick leave conversion. Sick leave conversion, um, this is a one-time thing where you, you know that, as I mentioned earlier, WJCC pays you for your sick leave, 25% of your daily rate times the number of days you have with a maximum of $5,000. You could use that amount and that $5,000 is taxed. So what's ever left after, tax, after taxes, you could use that to pur purchase additional months of service. My experience has been the most I've seen anybody be able to purchase is maybe three or four months. And that may make a difference. Um, but that's the most with that payout. And it, you have to decide whether that's worth it to get the money paid out to you for sick leave conversion, or to, sick to you, or to use it for sick leave conversion. As Ms. Macklin uh, said earlier, you want to get with a financial advisor and talk about those things. Or just have the money paid out to you and a check, as I mentioned earlier, for your sick leave, and you're going to say no here. So your option, will you be adding service credit, is either yes or no. If it's yes, you need to pay a lump sum. It's not, at this point, it's not a payroll deduction. It would be a lump sum check made payable to VRS for the cost of the service you want to purchase. That's something, if you're in that situation, you and I would talk about one-on-one -on -one and work, and I would work through that with you. Or if you would prefer to go to the VRS Counseling Center, they are certainly available to, um, to help you with that as well. So if you're not purchasing service and you're just ready to move on, all your service has been accounted for, or you're just not at the point where you want to purchase any this, this time, you do forfeit the option to come back later and do it after retirement. So you have to click the box and then you're going to click on either save and exit or save and continue. So we're going to save and continue. So moving on to the next screen. Um, applying for retirement. So as I mentioned earlier, your retirement date is always as of the first of the month. So you see we have a drop down menu here. 
And I suspect that it's going to say January 1, February 1, March 1, all the way to December, because remember, VRS retirement is always as of the first of the month. So you're going to put in your retirement date there. If you are retiring at the end of the school year, it's July 1, okay? Next box, you're going to select your payout option. And Ms. Macklin just went through all of those payout options. The basic benefit payout option, you can see is selected from Ms. Winona. The basic um, with PLOP, the survivor with PLOP, and the survivor option, excuse me, survivor option only, and the survivor with PLOP, and the advanced pension option. I want you to notice something here. The advanced pension option is sort of grayed out. So if you're not eligible, let's say, for the PLOP, that's going to be grayed out. You wouldn't be able to select it. Okay, so you just want to know for certain. Um, I hopefully you can see this on the screen and it's not covered up, but up here at the top, this is where your estimated um, payout option before taxes and notice the tax amount. I mentioned to you that that might be there as we move through this process. This is the online process. Now I can't calculate that for you. I'm not sure you can calculate that in my VRS, but it's there through this process of online retirement. Um, the last box on this page is a, spi is a spousal, I apologize, let me go back, a spousal acknowledgement um, and the member acknowledgement. So when we get to the paper pencil, you will see your spouse has to sign um, that they realize that you are retiring and what your payout option is. Here, you simply check the box and then um, you and your spouse discuss it and you check the box, let's be clear. And then uh, you check the box under the member acknowledgement as well. So you still have to have that spousal acknowledgement. There's no signature um, required on the online process. There is still a signature required when we, you'll, as you'll see when we do the paper pencil process. So we're gonna save and continue. So now they need to know where to send your money. The RS does not issue checks. If you notice our continuum is going right along with us here at the top. So now we have the payout um, de destination. So where does your money going? Is it going to a checking account or a savings account? At the bottom of your check or um, the bottom of your deposit slip, you have the little MICR numbers and that will provide you your bank routing number and your bank account number. Those are two things that you need. So we need to know your routing number or VRS needs to know, your financial, the name of your financial institution, your account number, confirm that account number. Um, and then it asks for it again, but I'm not sure why. And I think you only would have to need to put it in there once. Then of course you have to agree to allow them to access your account so that they can make that deposit. You check the little box and I cut this off, but as you probably know already, it's save and exit or save and continue. The tax withholdings. So VRS needs to know about your federal and state tax withholding elections. Okay, so if you want them to withhold, federal and state, there's a yes or no option here in the drop down menu for each box. If you do, if they do not withhold, you are responsible for making sure your taxes are paid. Again, get with your financial advisor to be sure you're doing what's best for you and your family, your marital status, the number of allowances, and if you want additional amounts taken out. Same thing for state. Now, if you're not going to be living in the state of Virginia, VRS cannot withhold taxes for other states. So let's say you do choose to move to Florida. Well, you need to say no here. Or if you're living in Virginia and you later move to Florida, you need to notify VRS that you are now living in a different state so that those state taxes are no longer withheld. You would put in, um, if you have a withholding for age and blindness and for personal exemptions, and if there's any additional withholdings, personal exemptions, People will often ask, what should I do? What do most people do? I cannot advise. We are not allowed to advise you on your withholding taxes. That's why we so encourage you to talk with a um, financial advisor that can advise you on those things. Again, we're gonna save and exit, or we're gonna save and continue, and we are gonna save and continue. So the health insurance credit. 
Um, Ms. Macklin has talked about the health insurance credit. If you are eligible, meaning you have been a member of VRS for at least 15 years, then this will pop up. I suspect that if you are not eligible, this will not be an option for you um, in, the, in the process, in the online process. Um, but it tells you, often people want to know how much am I gonna get? The, the um, maximum amount is, as was stated, $4 times your years of service. Here for Ms. Uh, Winona, the maximum she's gonna get is up to $84. But VRS needs to know about your health insurance. So down here at the bottom, we have three options. The first one does not apply because as, state, uh, as school employees, we're not state employees. So school employees, your um, health insurance premium is not deducted from your VRS monthly benefit. Okay, so this first option there is not an option. The second one says, I pay health insurance premiums that VRS will not deduct. I want to report those premiums later. So if you point the, uh, check those, you wanna report the premiums later, it's gonna take you on to the next screen. If you do wanna go ahead and report those premiums, um, then it's gonna take you here. And I'm gonna see if I can move this box up. There we go, so you can see it. All right, so here, and this mirrors the form, are you covered by Medicare Part B? If you are, of course, you're gonna say yes and state when your Medicare Part B began and how much you pay. They may have under other, they may have some options here. I suspect there's a drop down menu. And if the, uh, op, the amount that you're paying is not there, then you just type it in. If you are not Medicare eligible, you're gonna click no. So that means either you're staying on WJCC coverage or you have other coverage, maybe you already have TRICARE or you're going on to your spouse's coverage, then you're gonna click no and you're gonna go down here to this section. Enter any additional health, dental, vision, prescription drug coverage, okay? Um, if you are staying on WJCC coverage, I'm going to uh, answer these questions as though you were. Then the provider is Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. The plan name would either be Key Advantage 500, Key Advantage 250, or High Deductible Plan. And then the coverage option. So is it just you, one person, two people, you and a spouse, are you an independent, or is it a family? And that's the, a drop down menu there. And then the policy type. So for WJCC coverage, remember we our plan covers health, dental, vision, and prescription. So you would check all of those boxes. If you are going on your spouse's plan and it only covers health, then you're just gonna check health. And on this, the online, they do ask you for a policy number. They do not ask for that on the paper form. So you wanna have your card ready if you're doing the online plan, oh, excuse me, the online process, so that you can provide your policy number. And it's pretty much either your member ID number, it may be listed as plan ID number on your card. Who is the policy holder? Well, that's either you or your spouse, I suspect. So self or spouse. How many times per year is this paid? For WJCC retirees, that would be 12 times a year because we pay insurance once a month. How much is your single premium? Again, this is a little different than what's on the form. So you would need to look on that, um, sheet that I sent you, the retiree cost, what is the single amount? So you would type in whatever that. So for example, if you're looking at that now and you have Key Advantage 250 with comprehensive dental, that amount is $827 a month for the retiree. So you would put that in there. And then as total monthly amount, you can expect to pay for your portion of the coverage. Well, if you are WJCNC employee, you a retiree, you're staying on the coverage, it's at $827, so you just repeat that. If you're on your spouse's coverage, then how much is single coverage? It's asking, and then how much, or, may it, or the question, question may be different, and then how much of that is gonna be covering the cost for the retiree? So you would need to calculate that, okay? And then when did you start paying this premium? If you are a WJCC employee and you're less than 65 and you're staying on our plan, then the date for this is October 1 of 2022. If you are an uh, employee and you're 
going to be coming off and going on your, your spouse's coverage is also likely to be October of 2022, but you may come off sooner. That would be, um, we would discuss that. You and, you and I and your spouse, if necessary, would need, we could discuss that and we could make sure we have the correct date in there. Of course, you're going to click add insurance policy and we're going to move on. Okay, so we're at the end of the process nearly here. If you notice on our continuum, we're at submit and review. So we wanna review all the information, looking at your address, what you said about yourself. You're not adding any credit to your record. Uh, so you check that you forfeited the credit. And at the top, I'm sorry, at the top, um, other information that you have to check here and here and here, and then you can submit. So read before you check, make sure that you know what you are agreeing to, okay? Finally, you will get an authorization code that will be sent to you, okay? You wanna write that down somewhere, put it away. They're gonna email it to you, but Lorianne likes to have it written down somewhere herself. <laughs> so you want to have that and set that aside. Um, you also want to remember to notify your principal or supervisor. Um, I will get something in an email stating that uh, Lorianne Smith has applied for retirement and then I will have to certify. I follow my process to do that. And then they, then they, they being VRS picks it up from there. But I'm gonna stop right there before I move on to the paper forms and see, do we have any questions, John? It looks like we may have a few. Um, we do, Lorianne, just a couple. Um, hang on one second. Okay, first one, no pressure, but it's coming from Tim. Uh, for hybrid members, can you see both defined contribution as well as defined benefit information at the same website? That's a great question. Um, are you talking about, I'm, I'm going to answer that two ways because I'm not sure. You're talking about the online process um, for retirement. I do not know. Um, that was not a part of the training, but I could certainly find that out. Um, right now, there um, because you are hybrid. If you want to, you retire. You do the paper pencil process for VRS and for the defined benefit portion, and then use a separate paper pencil process for the defined contribution portion. Um, I suspect that there is a process online through the um, Mission Square portal, with, by which you can begin to withdraw or draw down your distributions from the defined contribution um, portion. And I will give way to Ms. Macklin, if you're still on, do you know if um, through the VRS, my VRS, do you see both defined benefit and defined contribution or do you in fact have to go to the Mission Square portal to do the defined contribution portion? Okay, great. Now, if a member is just logging in as a hybrid member, not really, thinking about retirement right now, but they just want to see their defined benefit piece in the defined contribution. Yes, you can see your defined benefit plus your defined contributions um, balances right now if you're just viewing your account. Regarding the retirement piece though, um, for the defined benefit, you will follow the same steps that Mrs. Smith is going over, but for your defined contributions, the um, hybrid defined contributions, you would want to reach out to Mission Square uh, to inquire about how to begin distributions for those contributions. Okay, thank you. So there are two separate processes for our hybrid members to receive your distribution and your um, monies from the defined benefit portion and then from the defined contribution portion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Another question, are longevity and degree stipends included in calculating the VRS benefit? Yes. Um, so 
John, I think I'm correct on this and you can help me with this. Um, the longevity and the degree is a part of the contract, I believe. And so it is part of the credible compensation that's reported to VRS. Um, you know, I'm not certain on that. Uh, I know like stipends are normally um, in a separate letter and I believe longevity has been as well. So I think we need to table that one and maybe put in an FAQ on the site. I'm kind of thinking no, but I don't, I don't have that certainty. Okay, so we're not sure, um, but whoever asked that question, if you would email it directly to me and I will find out for certain and we can do an FAQ um, at the end. Another question, if you have never used WJCC health insurance, you've always had health insurance through your spouse and you will not be getting health insurance through WJCC as a retiree, do you skip the health insurance credit form? No, if you've been a member of VRS for 15 years, um, you are eligible for the health insurance credit and you should still do the form because remember that's added to your monthly benefit from VRS each month. Now for the VRS $750 I talked about earlier, there's no form for that. That's that's me communicating with, with finance department. I mean, with, however, for the health insurance credit from VRS, if you are um, eligible, then I would certainly encourage you to go ahead and do that because that's money added to your um, monthly benefit and it's non-taxed. So you definitely wanna go ahead and do that if you're eligible. Do I fill in the current amount for monthly health insurance costs or wait until the new rates come out at the end of the year? So if you are retiring effective July 1 and you are less than 65 and you plan to stay on WJCC coverage, you're gonna go ahead and fill out what you're currently paying. So what you're currently paying as an active employee because that's gonna still be in effect through at least August. Um, and then you would complete um, that information, update that information for a VRS. Um, when you begin to pay the full amount directly to Anthem, because now the amount that you're paying has changed. And VRS does require, if there's ever a change, that you update them. And you probably likely can update them through the portal, just like I just went through. Or if necessary, you can print the form and update it and just fill out the form and send it as a, um, as a change to VRS and they will update their information there. So it would be a revised application or a change in health insurance premium on the health insurance credit form. So if you do, um, that, would, that would be a change you would want to notify VRS about. Okay. Is it true that you can retire and begin VRS benefits, but then go back to teach in a critical need area in the state and keep getting your full monthly VRS benefit? So there is a requirement from VRS that um, you not work more than 80%. And I'm gonna let Ms. Macklin uh, speak to that. Okay, regarding, um, great question, regarding the critical shortage area. Um, if you are going back full time, if it's a full time um, job in a critical shortage area, you have to be retired, if I'm not mistaken, for one full, for one full calendar year. Um, if it's full-time, if it's part-time, um, you still have to, after you retire, you have to remain off the payroll. There has to be a break in service. Um, and that's deemed, I think, by the school division. At one time, it was 30 days. Yeah, it's it still may, 30 days. It's 30, 30 days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so you have to be completely off the payroll for one full calendar for, for, for 30 days before you can return um, back to your employer or any VRS covered employer if you're going to work in a part time capacity. Part time, full time are two different return to work statuses. Um, more information, though, regarding working after retirement is on the website under about retirement and there's a section that talks about working full-time part-time also the critical shortage area as a retiree did that answer the question regarding the critical shortage area 
I believe so. And then I also want to inform our employees that for my 10 month employees, either you, you do have to, and all employees, anybody who retires, you do have to have that month break in service. Um, it's called a bona fide break in service that is required before you can come back and do anything, part-time, sub, anything. For my 10 month employees in particular, your one month break of service is the month of September. Summer does not count. So your month, one month break of service is September. And the first time you could do anything, sub, part-time, or anything else, is starting in October. Now, to keep Lorian clean, I cannot discuss future employment with retirees prior to your retirement because I do have to certify that I did not do so. So just know I can give you general information like that, but I cannot say, yeah, we'll have this position in October and we would, you know, you will qualify, you need to apply. I can't do that because I have to cert certify that I didn't do that. And I wanna try to maintain my integrity with VRS. <laughs> okay, next question, John. I don't believe there's a next question right now. Okay, awesome. So for those who would like to stay on, I am going to go over the forms. So if you wanna pull out your forms, um, so I just went through the online process of how to do um, apply for retirement online, but there may be some people who are just not comfortable with that yet and wanna go ahead and do the form. So I wanna start with the retirement for, excuse me, the application for service retirement form. At the top of the form, of course, you're gonna fill in your social security number, your retirement date. If you notice is 01 is already there for you because we always retire as the first of the month. You only have to fill in the month and the year. And then you're going to check whether there's an original application or revised. Most likely it is your original application. And then part A um, is your demographic information, your name, address, citizenship. And if you notice, this does mirror the online process that we just went through. They want to know your marital status, your uh, resident, whether you're a resident of Virginia, um, phone number, date of birth, email address. Ask for a little more information, but it's pretty, pretty close. And then questions 12 through 15. Do you intend to make a lump sum purchase of service credit prior to retirement? I talked about the service credit earlier, whether it's purchasing some part-time service that you had from, an, um, from WJCC or another employer, VRS covered employer, purchasing service, uh, refunded service, then you would answer yes or no. For most of the people that I deal with, the answer there is no. Will you be purchasing service credit with your sick leave payout? Yes or no. So this question is broken in down into two questions on the form, whereas on the online, it was just one question. VSDP participants only number 14, that's Virginia State Disability Program participants. That does not apply to WJCC uh, school employees, so that's no. And then number 15 asks, will you be terminating your full-time or part-time employment basically upon your retirement date? And you need to answer that question that you are retiring as of your retirement date. Page two, and if you notice this form is fillable, it's online, you have the paper form because I sent you the link to download it, but it is on the website under forms and you can fill it in and then print it uh, and sign it. So part B, this is where you would list your payout option. Ms. Macklin went over that, we talked about it on the online side. You would check whether you, are, you want basic payout option, basic with PLOP, the advanced pay, um, pension option, and here's where you would put in that age that you want the benefit to reduce or to decrease. Survivor option, if you want to have a, a survivor and your survivor is a spouse, um, only a spouse can uh, have 100%, I believe. The survivor option between 10 and 100% and only a spouse can have 100% or the survivor option with PLOP. So those are your options. If you are doing PLOP, you're gonna do number 18. Tell them if you want 12, 24, or 36 months. So if you choose either basic benefit with PLOP or survivor with PLOP, then you will answer number 18. If you choose anything else, you skip number 18. Part C, you will only complete part C if you choose the survivor option. And I always try to remind my employees, survivor is different than beneficiary. Remember, this is your survivor who's gonna receive a monthly benefit upon your passing. If you did not choose one of these boxes over to the right, then you're gonna skip part C. 
Part D, certification, again, read before you sign, member needs to sign, and spouse needs to sign. Please sign and date the same date. Um, read it, work on it together, and sign and do the same date. I encourage you to do that. So I think I hit all of my little areas there that we need to cover, okay? The PLOP, so if you chose the basic benefit with PLOP or the survivor option with PLOP, then you're gonna complete part E. If not, you're gonna skip this page. But if you are, then you have to remember your funds that have gone into your account are pre-tax and so they are taxable. Um, you're gonna put in the percentage that's gonna be paid directly to you. And if you want a percentage now to be rolled over into, let's say, an, a, an IRA or a 403B or um, 457 or 401A, then you would put the percentage. The two percentages here need to total 100. Or maybe you're having 0% come directly to you and 100% going directly to your 403B or IRA. The total here needs to be 100%. And then if you are rolling it over, then you need to list who's gonna be receiving that. Is it Edward Jones and the address, the plan name, the address, the account number that, the, that it's going to, they need that information. So you would fill out that section. This next page, part F, just like on the um, online, they need to know where to send the money. So the name of your financial institution, whether it's going to checking a savings account, and then you're going to tape, not staple, but tape a copy of a voided check or avoided deposit slip there with the MICR numbers at the bottom so that they can know what account to send it to. And then, so we've just covered that, your withholdings, tax withholdings, federal and state, looks just like, are really close to the online process. If you do not want them to withhold, them being VRS, federal taxes is the first box. If you do not want them to hold, withhold state taxes, it's the first box. If you do, then you're instructing them to calculate your federal income taxes, calculate my state taxes. And then your um, marital status, number of allowances. If you want additional amounts withheld, then you would write that in there. If not, just put a zero there. Same here, marital status, exemptions for personal or age and blindness, and the total. Additional amounts withheld will be written here or zero. Again, I cannot advise you on this. It's something you want to talk about with your financial advisor and or your spouse and you all decide. Now, when you make these withholding choices is not set in stone. You can change it later. Things change in life. You wanna withhold more, you wanna withhold less, you wanna change your number of withholdings. There is, you can do it online likely, or you can print the uh, tax withholding form. I believe it's the VRS 15 and just fill it out and send it into VRS. So um, the, this is the request for health insurance credit form. And I filled this one out a little bit. I had a little fun with this one, doing it for Betty Rubble um, from the Flintstones from my childhood. I may be telling my age, but that was my favorite cartoon. Um, and so you're gonna put in your social security number and your phone number. You are a new participant. Someone asked earlier, well, what about if this changes? Well, if it changes, remember you need to update VRS and you would fill out this exact same form or do it online. But if you do the form, you're just gonna check this box down here. It says change in health insurance premium or policy. You're not a new participant anymore. You're just making a change. Part A, you're going to fill in your demographic information. Number six is actually for optional retirement plan. That's not you. Um, likely if um, you think it is, you and I need to talk and we will uh, address it accordingly. Number seven, again, asking if you're uh, eligible for part B. So we're gonna say, for sake of argument, Betty is. So she's gonna say yes, when her Medicare part B will start, and um, then the amount that she's paying each month. Basically, you sign. she would sign the form and send it in at that point. However, if you are not eligible for part B, you wanna go ahead on to the next page. And I've already covered all of that, to the next page. And this is where, again, you're gonna put in that information about your health insurance. So let's say Betty said, no, she's not Medicare eligible and she's gonna stay on WJCC coverage. Well, I filled it in for her. She's on Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. She's on Key Advantage 250, that's the name of the plan. She is the policy holder. She's covering herself and spouse. 
And if you're doing this on the fillable form online, you can only check one of these boxes. Our coverage, however, is health, dental, vision, and prescription. So once you print the form, you would manually just go back and check these boxes because our insurance does cover all of those. If you are doing um, filling this out and you're on your spouse's coverage, or maybe it's your supplemental coverage because you actually are on Medicare, then you would fill out the information, the provider of the coverage. Maybe it's Optima, maybe it's United Health. Fill in the information, so, um, policyholder, what it covers, and now number 13. How many times per year is insurance premium paid? 12 times per year. We do pay once a month for WJCC coverage. How much is the premium? Well, for Betty and Barney, it's $388. For Betty, it's $194. We just took it in half. That would be the single, single rate for her. Um, divided that in half. What is the current effective date? Well, at back then when I did this, it was 10-1-2021. 2020, 2020. However, for you, new employees, uh, new retirees who are staying on the coverage, it would be 10-1-2022 if you're staying on the coverage. Uh, excuse me, let me back up. If you are staying on our coverage, this became effective 10-1-2021. 2021, and then when you redo the form, it would be 10-1-2022, okay? And I wanna say that again, because I, I don't want there to be any confusion. If you're staying on the coverage and you're doing this because you have a July 1 retirement date, this date would be 10-1-2021, the first time you do the form. When you update the information for Anthem because you're staying on WJCC coverage, but now your amount that you're contributing, that you're paying is, is more, the date is now 10-1-2022. If the plan is not provided by the Commonwealth of Virginia COV plan, and our plan is not, the WJCC plan is not, they wanna know the address, you simply have to write in Richmond, Virginia. Does this policy um, cancel a previous policy? No, we just have previous changes, I mean, excuse me, premium changes, and that would be the same when you redo the form the second time. If you have additional policy, maybe you're on your spouse's coverage and there's a health coverage and a separate dental or vision coverage, then you can fill out that information on that um, there, okay? For those of you who choose to do the paper pencil, um, I am happy to review those forms as I always have, and then I will fax them to VRS for you um, so that um, they are in, in a timely fashion. You don't have to worry about that. I encourage you to keep copies of the forms for your records. Um, I will fax them in and the original will go in the file here. If you are doing it online, of course, there's no copies to be kept, but it, everything is housed online in the portal through my VRS. And then I do receive that notification. Just a reminder that uh, you are to notify your principal or supervisor in writing, CC Human Resources, when you do make that decision to retire. Um, I am always available. This presentation does not superimpose, supplant, or otherwise get rid of our one-on-one -on -one, um, option to sit down and talk with me. I'm happy to do that via Zoom, via phone message, the phone call, or um, send. you can email your questions to me and I will answer them as promptly as I can. Um, this has been a pleasure. I'm sure we have some more questions. I'm going to leave this screen up that Ms. Macklin had up. And John, what does our questions look like? Or what do our questions we, look like? We have a couple more. It says, can you purchase prior service for an extended 10-month unpaid maternity leave? I believe so if it was FMLA. If you were on FMLA, um, you can purchase FMLA time. Um, I just had was work with someone on that. Um, if you were out and you were on leave without pay and it's listed in their system as medical, I believe you can go back and purchase that service and I can assist you with that. We can um, get an estimate of what that would cost. And then we can determine if it's, you know, help you. We can look at the information and then you can determine whether or not it's worth it to purchase that additional time. Um, or to invest that money otherwise. But yeah, we can certainly talk about that. Um, but it has to be leave without pay um, and it has to be medical, but it can be under the FMLA. Mm -hmm. okay. My spouse who is currently on my WJCC insurance will be eligible for Medicare on 10-122, but I will not be eligible until 12-122. 
can he go ahead and go on Medicare starting 10-1 while I COBRA until 12-1? Yes, um, you can COBRA until 12-1 or uh, you keep in mind with COBRA, there's a 2% administrative fee that's added to the cost. So those amounts that I sent you on the health insurance rates add 2%. However, as a retiree, you can just stay on the coverage as a retiree, fill out the form or do it online, whichever we're doing at that time. And then you just would stay on for two months and you would come off once you're eligible. So if you're eligible December 1, meaning you turn 65 in December, your coverage with WJCC would then end November 30th because you become Medicare eligible December 1. Okay. Am I correct that you cannot keep just dental coverage by itself after retirement? That is correct. Okay, and I think that wraps up the questions. And just let me elaborate on that. You cannot keep just the dental coverage, um, and that's Delta Dental's requirement because we're under the small group plan. Used to be able to, but because we're under the small group plan, um, they do not allow retirees to stay on the coverage. So that wasn't a WJCC decision. Okay. Well, if that's all we have, I want to thank you all for, for coming. I'm sorry that um, you can't see me. I can see you and say thank you. Um, at, for those who will be watching this as a video later, please feel free to reach out to me af after you've had an opportunity to watch this if you have any questions and we can make sure that we get your questions answered. It's been, in the words of Les Brown, a plum pleasing a pleasure as well as a privilege. I can't say it as, way as, as well as he does, but you all take care. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.